come in low and deep. Now that back leg is steps in and you thigh lift them or, or leg lift them. This video analyzes how and why lifting throws work. And there are a lot of lead up skills that are necessary to make these throwing techniques work. And there's a definite progression of skill for lifting techniques. So let's, let's take a look at them here real quickly and we'll get into a very lengthy analysis of how these work. Uh, there are two primary directions in your, in your lifting throws. Either you throw your opponent uh, over your back and to his front or uh, to his rear. So there are two primary directions, so keep that in mind. Now, there are a lot of lead-up skills. There's a definite progression of skill, and these lead-up skills include the following. You should have a good, aggressive, offensive style of uranagi. And uranagi is, is one of the, the primary techniques necessary to do this, all lifting throws well. Another one is, is the, the send after thigh sweep, like very much like an okoryashi barai, only using your thigh. We will discuss this thoroughly in this video. That teaches the use of the lifting of the leg and the thigh sweeping action, the lifting action that's very necessary in these throwing techniques. Another thing is the effective use of grip and how to control the opponent's back. It's not just a one-time thing. It's a matter of, of tactically, actually strategically using grips to control your opponent's upper body and obviously his hips and lower body as well and shoulders. So the gripping is essential. So we're going to look at that in this video as well. The ability to close the space between your body and your opponent's body. Uh, th these are very close, compact, short grip situations. There's hardly any body space between you and your opponent, and it's essential to know how to make that gap closed and to get very close in body space. Now there is hip rotation, especially this is especially true for forward direction throws when you're throwing them over, you know, to your backside and to his front side. So hip rotation and use of the hips is an essential ingredient. It's an essential skill in doing the, these type of throws. And last but certainly not least is the ability to get around the corner or your opponent's side when you're doing a throwing direction to his rear, just as we see here in this Uranagi. So you can see there are a lot of lead up skills and progressions uh, that, that are necessary. This isn't a trick throw. It takes a lot of skill, a lot of effort, and a lot of training to develop the timing and all the necessary skills you need to have an effective lifting uh, or pickup type throw. So that's what this whole video is about. Uh, it takes time. It's not just something like it's a, an isolated technique, like I mentioned before. There are a lot of varial, there are a lot of lead up skills necessary, and I can't stress that enough to make this type of throw work. So I hope you enjoy the video. We try to make it as comprehensive as possible. You see a lot of the Mongolians and the Russians do with a lot of high lifting throws. This is the basis for doing those throws. It is a really unexpected, aggressive throw. Okay, so let's look at it here so you can see it real quickly. Now I'm having you guys practice. So Derek's taking a right grip, standard grip. He never lets go of his right hand on the lapel up here. That's the high grip up here. What he's going to do, he's going to come in with his left side. He's going to come in and shoot past Mike. And as he does, he grabs real tight around the waist. He tight waist him. Look at the head. In the, and that's one thing we didn't point out before, the head and the shoulder here. Right at the pectoral, the upper pectoral area. He's lowered his levels. And when, when Derek lifts him, he's going to use his head to steer and control Mike on the way over. So as he lifts him up, look at his head, how he works it. Well, he uses that just like a third arm. Yeah. That'd be a third arm. arm. Yeah, a third arm. Okay, one more time. So come in. So he comes in, he goes. You notice he didn't do a duck under or anything else. When he came into Mike, come in to just catch him, and look where Derek puts his head. Bam, right here. He's got his head right there in that shoulder. Great control at this point. Hips are controlled. Is this side of the body's under control. Derek's lowered his level. And what he's going to do is just going to lift and rotate. Or they can keep turning. That's a key thing to keep turning into. So we're going to open up just like we normally would. And then as you step in, you're, you let go of the grip and you slide around the waist. Okay? So open, step, slide, drop the waist, nice and low. Really a fundamentally important throw. I think that's why we 
want you guys, uh, when, you, when you're just starting out pretty much, to learn Uranagi. It's a great counter, it's a very powerful counter, but it's also a great aggressive move, yeah. offensive technique. And it's, it's not, some of the uh, mechanics of it are similar to a suplex, but it's not a suplex. You have to use your legs a little bit more. And it helps if you have the back arch, but your legs still start down and you rotate up and then you arch back and you turn immediately. So right about the point, you would probably be upending the guy in the suplex. Right about the apex, you turn so that you land on him. Okay, so you start getting better and better at the back arch, but it's, it's not the same thing as a suplex. A lot of people will say, oh, well, that's just a suplex, and it's, it's really not. Right? Back arch helps, but it's, it's not the whole thing. Do one more as a counter, and then one more as an aggressive. So here, here's the counter technique. Okay. Then we turn it into an aggressive technique, offensive movement. See, you're throwing him to the rear. Or up, rear, nagi throw. All right? Solid stuff, fundamentals work. The guys have been around a long time. We're going to carry out some more. We're going to be doing uh, some more tonight. Uh, but let's look at uh, what we're going to call. Uh, it, it, it's a variation of a kuriyashi barai, sliding or send after foot sweep, but we're using the thigh. So um, I first picked this up years ago. I saw the samba. I saw the use kind of the samba because the, the thigh was not so much. And and it's really uh, it's, it's not a foot sweep as much as it's a thigh sweep. Okay. And the word momo, M-O-M-O, -M -O, momo means thigh. So I always call it okuri, send after, sliding, momo barai, uh, thigh sweep. Okay. And I'll have Derek here in a moment, but some key things, um, let's get a comparison. The sliding foot sweep, send after foot sweep, is basically, you know, we'll, we'll start up a couple steps because this is kind of a basic way. We'll step, step, sweep, like that, catch the, catch the feet, okay? All right. The mobile barai, the thigh sweep, I'm going to have to start a little further back and shave the angle here. So here, see how I'm starting this way in the choreography barai? Okay? I'm stepping a little closer here with the, the sweeping leg, the thigh sweeping leg here. Okay? Now it's also very helpful, rather than just grabbing the, the sleeve, if I go ahead and grab it back here, this, and I basically, you know, I use that analogy often where we loop the belt around the body, around, this is what we're doing here. Like I'm moving a belt or a rope around it, catching here at the lapel, catching him here just at the floppy part of the knee behind the, the shoulder here, and just closing him in. And when I do my step, it's, it's you know, I'm stepping, step, step, sweep, and I'm almost kicking him in the butt. That's what I'm doing. And I need to demo with somebody. Shave that, see that? Okay. Now when he steps, his initial step, when he steps, it's gonna be an open step with that foot already. Because really, you're going to catch him in one step usually. So we're doing two. And that's what it looks like. Okay? He did nice and slow so you can see it. But it, what he's doing, he's using the inside of the sty, inside of the sty here, to sweep right along just these buttocks and, and upper you know, hamstring area, you know, the back of the, the leg area here. So when he does it, he do a couple steps and he's going to sweep. And it looks like, oh, it's kind of a. Bit me to Koryashi Barak. We call it that if we wanted to, that's fine. But it's really more precise if we call it a thigh sweep, because that's what you're using. And when he does this, he really catches, you're usually a little closer, so you're a little closer, more compact grip, shorter grips in here. Alright? You notice how he's trapping, trapping. And when he does this, that hip is like a beeline right across here, and he's using the inside of his thigh, and he just sweeps it real hard like that. Okay, just do two steps that do most of the step. Bam. And you do it with nice and easy, real control. You didn't like kill the guy. I mean, you really splatter on this one. If you do it with it. See, it works better on a one step shot. It really does. It's just a hit and go. And a lot of people will say it's a Koryashi Barai. That's fine. I mean, call it what you want. Just call it a pawn. But in this case, it is more accurate to say it's a thigh sweep. So let's look at it one more time now. Differences. And just to get a standard grip from the counter here with you. Now, if he's just doing a, th a, a Korea Shibari, here it is. Here's the stance, right? Half step behind. But he's, and he can still grab this, but 
it's better, it's really effective, it gets you closer, it gets Derek closer to Steve, if he uses this grip up here, and see how he rounded that corner, he shaved that corner, okay? His hip is in direct position to really sweep hard. And that's what we want. And when he steps with his right foot, his, his lead foot here, he doesn't step sideways, he opens it, because eventually we're going to do, he'll do one step in a second here. But when he does it, he opens that up, and that thigh really can lift him, really slam him, okay? So go ahead and step into it. If he's doing quick, if he did a plowing him, I mean, he'd limit right on top of him, you know, it's a crash pad throw, you know. But, yeah. <laughs> well, okay, let's do a crash pad. Let's do it from a different direction. The same direction. Watch when he comes along sideways. See that? That's, that's, bam, that's catching. It is, you can see how we can effectively practice this on a crash pad. Just going to lift with a crash pad is really the most efficient way. And it gets you chest to chest. That's how you would actually throw them in a competition, a real fight for that matter. You know, because you can do this in the street too. He's your crash pad, okay? Let's do it one more time on the pad. And watch how he steps, and it doesn't move around. Bam. He sold it too before he just landed so cool. Let's see how he turns out belt. In too many cases, people try to do these big lifting leg lift type throws, these body slam type throws that they see in international judo without getting the basics of uranagi down first. You have to have the basic concepts of uranagi before you can go on to these more advanced leg lifting, uh, thigh lift type techniques. That is fundamentally important. So don't try to skip the basics. Get the uranagi down first, then go on to the more advanced skills that you see in international level judo. This is Uranagi with a leg lift. And it's really a, a variation of Sambo throw, Sambo leg lift throw and, and a rear throw, but you sure can't apply it to Judo or even to Sambo, anything you want. So what we're doing, let's watch Derek and Eric here. So Derek, why don't you talk us through us when you step in, do, do some, of the, some of the setups here, the setup here. I like the, uh, the flare grip to get my, around the shoulder, or German grip here, so I've got this, I open him up, pull him in, and catch right behind the scapula. If he has a normal right handed grip, that crushes that shoulder and compresses it nicely. I'm going to take a step to the side, and then I shield head on head. Okay, let me come around the back side here. Okay, thanks for turning. So when you're coming in, your angle of attack is not directly in front of him. Is can you start again? So we're not standing. You're not standing directly in front of your opponent. You're off to the side, aren't you? Yep. Now with your left hand, that comes around the outside. It's uh, trapping his arm. Now your right hand. Can you lift your arm up, Derek? Or Eric? I'm sorry. See how it traps the, the tight waist him, really? Let's come around that back side so you can see how the the grip is. And look at the back grip here. The left hand is trapping higher. The right hand is trapping lower on the hips. Okay, and when you're doing that, let's come back. Just do that again from that position, and don't throw. Just come. In. Now look at how you drop in. See how that, that drop step, everybody? When he, that left foot is a drop step, just like a, a lunge step, like in wrestling. Okay, all right. So his his left hip is much lower than the defender's right hip, Eric's right hip. Okay, and that, that gives you opportunity to move behind him, which is you're going to do that in a moment. Okay, I'll come around back to the other side. So let's, let's, let's go ahead and get to your other side here, guys, and I'll come around. Now, let's look at some key elements of this where some people may make a mistake. When they come around with that left hip, they come too high and they're vulnerable to an Uchimata counter. That, see, you, you come high like that, you will get countered. So you don't want to do that. When you come around that, with that left hip drops very low behind, see, low and deep. There you go. And, it's, it, and, see, and also using the hands. Now that back step, let's examine that. Can you do that again for us, Derek? So that low, see that back step? That puts you in position now to be able to do what's going to happen next here. See, see how the hip, the left hip is underneath uh, the defender's right hip? Okay. Now he's going to thigh lift, he's going to leg lift, and he's going to throw him. 
I'll get this angle, guys. Go ahead and do it again, if you would. Nice. You have to think of that back step leg as a spring. Similar to your Uchimata, it's just reversed. So, as I'm coming through here, this is the start. This is to block his hip and get underneath his hip. This comes through and gives me a nice little spring ready to drive upwards. Move that, move that mat, so we're going to step back so that people can see it. Okay. Okay, so as I come in, this is locking on the shoulder, underneath his hips. Step back so I'm ready to spring up off this base leg. And this leg, that is the, the lifting guy, the lifting knee, comes straight up and unwinds. Boom. And then it's just a matter of trying to turn and face where you're going to land. Correct. Don't go straight back. Yeah, keep turning always chest to chest. Turn into him so you land him flat on his back. Now let's get from another angle. Keep doing that same position, gentlemen. When, when you're coming in, let's look at that right hand that traps as well, that tight waist. That, you come in that angle. That, now let's examine that right hand. That's an important thing there. See that, that, that low trap at the hips, that high trap at the shoulders. You're really coming around his, uh, his deltoid, really. And when you do that with your left hand, you're just, or your left elbow, you're just sinking in that, you're cinching it in tight, aren't you, by dropping that elbow when you kind of sink it in. There you go, yeah, like that. Nice and tight there, nice and tight here. Yeah, that's a key thing. That 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 head, that really is a directional thing for you. The, your left side of your head on his pec. Okay, step back. Excellent. Let's come. I'll, I'll stay here at that angle. That's a very good angle, gentlemen. Let me focus in on that. When you do that, continually turn with the hip, or turn into them and, and finish it. So, so that's, that finishes it. There you go. So we know who threw who. Any other thing you have to add to that, Derek? Because you, you do a lot of thigh lifts, and this is, this is unadulterated Sambo. It really, it looks very much like uh, the old Georgian uh, Cheetah Oba. Right. You know, so. A lot of Georgians are very good at it. Uh, Rakesh Billy, I think is, the latest one to really be known for it. Mm -hmm. uh, the key though is really your, your lift on your other leg. You know, this is more like a platform. You're still lifting with it, but if you don't have a good plant leg, it's, it's not gonna work. It makes it very, again, very similar to Uchimata. If you don't have good bend and good spring in your stability leg, no Uchimata. Or at least kind of a crappy one. So, so that, that back step is really essential is what yeah. you're saying here. Yeah. It's just like it, like any base leg in any forward throw. Right. I'm not just going to come back and put my foot right there and, you know, try and do that. I'm going to stick that foot through and come down as I do. So that when I do back arch, I have all that spring in my leg. Let's key off that back leg one more time because that is where a lot of people make a mistake. They come too high. Let's, let me come back, get a better position. Come start again, Derek. So when you're coming in with that left hip, come in low and deep. Now that back leg is steps in and you thigh lift them or, or leg lift them. There we go. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Nice and tight. So at, at its core, the more distance there is between his chest and your chest, the easier it is for him to counter. Yeah, it has to be really short grips and a really close proximity and body space, especially upper body. From hips up, definitely. Right. You know. So as soon as you're coming in, you're you're balling them up like a bag of groceries. You know, it's it still possible to do that even with the no gripping below the belt rule. The idea. Okay. Can you do that one more time for us, and then we'll and we'll finish out. There we go. We're going to do so, that. Uh, Derek, why don't you go ahead and tie up. I'll talk, coach you through it, and then I'm going to have you add anything you want. So if, if we're in a, a normal stance here, I'm going to catch a cross grip on his sleeve. 
and then as he tries to tug the sleeve back, that's going to give me the opening to slip right in between his his ribs and his elbow and get around and tight waist him. So you want to get that tight waist around, uh, tight waist uh, around his waist. Don't grab his belt. You tend to have a floating elbow. Hook the whole elbow or hook the whole hip. Set up here is when you're grip fighting. You got it. There's your anchor. Your left hand is your anchor hand to set him up because a lot of times they'll pull it away. And a good a good guy isn't just going to flop it away. He's going to keep it elbow in tight, pull it in, and there. See that's how you set him up. Now there's your setup. Now, it's just a matter of what do I want to do with this guy from here? I mean, you could toss with a Ogoshi. You could do all kinds of rip. So, kind of show that real quick, guys. He catches that. He, he swims through and he catches, okay? Now, what, Derek, we, we were rolling with a Yoko Garuma earlier. Okay, that's a great throw. But now we're going to do something, and I actually picked this up on John Saylor many years ago. Uh, it's, a, it's a sweet move. And... Tight waist in there, and let's look at everything. When he's doing this tournament, guys, can you see see his head right on the chest? That's essential. He's, he's completely dominating and controlling the shoulder. His head is going to be used to, to really push, you know, as, as a kind of a third arm, okay, as Renee Palmer, the third arm. Okay, you drive there, but see how he's tying him up. So everything's tied up here. Now, you notice how he's come in with his hips. And when he does this, he's going to keep proceeding through, and he's going to do a thigh sweep or a lifting type five throw, like that. Why don't you come to the side and so he can do the full thing. So he, 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 does the, uh, he does the omelet grip, catches it, now watch the thigh sweep. Man, there you go. So Derek, can you show us what you're doing there? It's a cross grip into a Georgian grip. Right. And you're really doing a, a front thigh lift, front knee lift. It looks very much like a, a, a sumi geishi or hikomi geishi, but you're not doing a sacrifice. You're doing a lift and a lot of hip movement and a turn. So, right. can you show us that? Basically, I think this would be a, what, in samba, this would be a variation of a skull check. Uh, but in judo, this would be hikomi geishi or maybe even a, a variation of obitori geishi. Obitori geishi, possibly, yeah, right. So, we're going to start by catching a cross grip with two hands on that sleeve and we're going to bring it down so I get that shoulder dip. And then as he pulls his hand back, he brings his shoulder in to get that one back, which allows me to cut through and get my Georgian grip real tight. And I'm still pulling this sleeve right there. I see what you're doing there, yeah. So you don't let go of the sleeve when you get the Georgian grip, you keep both of them because that's going to make it impossible for him to turn out on this side. And as soon as we get that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to step in, I start to pull, and I catch with the thigh. And you're not going right up into his balls. If I hadn't turned, I would hit him right in the crotch. Mm -hmm. but what I'm doing is I'm turning and pulling that, that Georgian grip and catching the upper part of his thigh with my knee and my thigh. Boom, and over we go. And as you get more athletic with it, you come in and really try and get sky high with that knee and turn hard. And you'll get a big, beautiful summit. I notice also, people would think they have, you have to lift a lot with your knee, but I see a lot of hip action there too. A lot, a lot of hip rotation. Right, it's, it looks like that there, it's a big, like strong person throw, but it really is a lot of the work is already done just by taking that shoulder and catching the Georgian grip. And then the finish is just really good hip turn. I need to get him up off the foot, so I lift with my knee, but from there, it's just, See, a lot of people emphasize, they think first it's a, a, a knee lift, a thigh lift, which we do that, yes, right. but that hip rotation is really what makes it work, wouldn't you say? Right. Yeah, and a lot of the, the reversing style uh, Georgian grip sambo throws are a lot more of it is rotation than it is. Like, it looks like, you know, the Carbarellis and, and the, uh, the great mining throws, 
it looks like you're doing this huge big piece of it, really you're just leaning their hips up and up so that you can twist them super hard and turn or arch. Yeah, that, that thigh is just like, uh, is, is extra, really. It right. is extra. Yeah, it's, it's the cherry on, on top. If yeah. I've done my work, I'm not really using my knee too much. It's very much a hip rotational type throw. Right. Can you show again here what we're doing? 